Hi. Hi, Clive. Hi. How are you doing? Great. Great, thank you. Yes, it's, it's great to speak to you. Um, this time, uh, you on the line from Chicago. Well. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, and, and welcome to Camden Town Radio. Well, I love being there, both on, on the radio and in Camden Town. Yes, oh, it's, it's great to have you on the show, live from Chicago, yes. All right, that's great. So, believe, is it right you, do you run a guitar shop, is that right? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, my son and I uh, run a, a smaller shop uh, in uh, Mokina, Illinois, ah. which is about... 45 minutes south of Chicago. Okay, right, yes. Axes Music, A-X-E-S. Oh, right, that's your shop. Axes Music. Oh, yeah. right, okay. And, and oh. you can do it. It's, uh, the website is axes-music.com. Oh, right, great. Well, we'll put the links below our show, certainly, to uh, let people know. Uh, Absolutely, because we do have listeners around the world, so... <laughs> It's, uh, oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I'll just explain to the listeners that uh, I did meet you at the Chris Slade gig in Camden Town. Correct. Uh, when you were over uh, on vacation, but we'll come on to that in a minute. But, uh, yeah, we're very interested in, in the store that you have in Chicago. So is it sort of a traditional guitar shop? I mean, what sort of what sort of instruments do you tend to stop? Actually, it, it really is uh, the traditional, the old school type of thing, you know, where yeah. you do lessons and repairs. And, ah, right. uh, where the guys come in and hang out, we'll sit and play a little bit, and then yeah. we yell at each other, no, you're playing that wrong, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah, that sounds uh, great. Is it a mixture of electric and acoustic? Yes, uh, we do some uh, electric and acoustic guitar. Uh, we actually have a drum teacher and a piano teacher as well. Yes. Oh, right, so you, you, offer, you offer a range of services. Uh, yes, we can that, and we'll, uh, we'll teach the kids how to to maintain their instrument as well so they don't have to get out to a gig and panic when something <laughs> goes wrong. <laughs> oh, right. And, and you, do you have a, I think they call it a, a luthier on site? Uh, we're kind of our own luthier. Yes. Uh, I do I do have some access to some luthiers. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. And in, in our industry, you, you need to. Yes. Uh especially when you get a serious repair. But for the most part, it's just basic maintenance and yeah. teaching uh, not only ourselves, but the, the suits as well as uh, the customers, how to maintain their, their instrument without uh, letting anything go crazy, you know, oh, to right. get it to the <laughs> point where it starts falling apart. Yes, no, that makes sense. Yeah, I guess maintenance is the key, keeping it in good condition. You're talking about Chicago and stuff and, and recording studios. Uh, my son actually owns a recording studio oh, oh, does he? across, yeah, across ah. the street from our, our music store. It's called uh, X's Music Group, and uh, he does stuff around the world, literally. Oh, right. Uh, with some serious people, too, and that's very cool. But I, I grew up, uh, you mentioned the group Chicago. Actually, I, I knew uh, most of them. So, did you actually, were you, are you born and raised in Chicago? I, I was uh, born and raised. I spent most every uh, summer in uh, Memphis oh, right. uh, as as a child. Yes. Uh, yes. Because my, my parents got divorced ah, okay. uh, when, when I was a young age. Ah, and, right. uh, you know, it, it happens. Yeah. Uh, but, but oddly enough, uh, and my father verified this when I finally got to meet him when I was almost 40 oh, right. and just be yeah just before he passed on okay. but uh, the story my mother always told me was that my teachers were my dad and Chad Atkins oh, gosh. Yes. and uh, my, my father uh, said the same thing when I finally met him he said but you know I, we moved away because we got divorced yeah uh, so I I didn't see my father or Chad Higgins uh, right. af after the age of six. <laughs> oh, right. That's not a bad teacher to have as a first. Uh... <laughs> well, yeah. you know, the, the things they taught me in about six months were enough to ruin my technique for right. life. <laughs> 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 because uh, they, they started you with banjo rolls, bigger oh, style, and, and uh, now it's kind of hard to get away from... Uh, when I went to college, I tried to learn to play some classical. Yeah. Uh, but 
the technique was so so much different, I kept falling back into what I grew up with. Oh. So I said, well, so much for classical. Yes. Yes, that's quite a different. But, I've, I've played. A, I do play guitar myself, and yes, that's quite a, a different discipline to, to, to get into. Yeah, it, yeah. it really is. But uh, one of yeah. my favorite players is uh, Adrian Lake. Oh yeah. Uh, just absolutely love his style and his open tuning and his uh, banjo tuners and stuff like that. It's it's quite unique. It's brilliant, brilliant artist. Uh, I met him when uh, we were at one of the trade shows, and I was with uh, Cornford Amps helping Paul Cornford, and that's where I met Chris Slade and Guthrie Gubbin, oh, okay. and, and uh, Bill Hillborn, Jamie Humphreys. Uh, in fact, Guthrie and Jamie have, and Paul Cornford have all spent time at the house. Oh, right. Oh, that's, that's great. It's always, always nice to link up with uh, fellow musicians. I know I find the same. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, wonderful, wonderful blokes. Yeah, so it, it, sounds like, it sounds like you had a very uh, sort of strong musical upbringing from from the get go, really. From uh, pretty uh, much, yeah. actually, I did. And uh, Terry Kath, the guitar player from Chicago. Yeah. Uh, I would take lessons uh, before him uh, oh, yeah. at, oh. uh, from our teacher up by. Uh, when I lived up north, okay, yeah. uh, and it was by O'Hare Airport and uh, town, a little town called Bellwood. Yeah. Stu, Pier- Stu Pierce was our teacher, okay. uh, and as as a player, he was sloppy, right? <laughs> and, and and he would chain smoke, and, oh. he, and and he would sit there and pull a flask out and start swearing. You kids are gonna drive me crazy. <laughs> And, and I'm sure we were, because every time I saw Terry, he either smacked me across the back of the head because he's a couple of years older than me, oh. and, or uh, or he would just start making fun of me as a, as a younger child. But oh. uh, Stu Pierce was a brilliant, brilliant teacher. Oh. Oh. Uh, he had a three-piece jazz band that he would play out every now and then. Yeah. And even though his technique was sloppy he knew what it was supposed to be yeah I say yes and yeah. he taught a lot of good a lot of good students over the years and uh, he was a wonderful human being and would do anything for any musician and uh, even after Chicago made it he when they were uh, just starting out yeah they were getting uh, all kinds of press and stuff and uh start playing different gigs and, and Stu would go to the, the gigs and say, oh. no, you should try this, try that, and helped him with the whole package. And, oh, right. So he was, a, he was a key influence from the... Oh, he was a wonderful man. Yes. A wonderful man. So so was it... You, you're saying Terry was there. Was he also taking lessons with you at the same time? Uh, he, oh. Well, not at the same time. He took them right after I did. Oh, I see. Right. Oh, so you'd, but, you'd meet him sometimes as you were... Yeah, I... As I was leaving, ah, he was coming in or okay. something. Yes. And I think he was like three years older than I was. And, oh. Uh, so are we talk. Are we, uh, is he sort of? Are we talking? Um, you're in, still in your teens here, or what? what uh? Uh, I was uh, about eleven. Oh, right. So he's. And so Terry had to have been about thirteen, fourteen, something yes. like that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, All right. So quite early on, you had. You were, amongst members of the band Chicago from <laughs> which I guess was quite likely as you were involved in music in the Chicago area so I guess it was a strong chance that you'd, you'd be your paths would cross <laughs> well yeah. thanks thanks to a, a little band that you guys came out with uh, uh, when I was younger I think they were called the Beatles or oh, something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, they had such an influence on the world but yeah that that really made the Chicago music scene just start flourishing like crazy. Oh, right. So they were big, and yeah. It, it, and it was really cool because now instead of these guys that you thought were, were geeks or whatever, <laughs> you know, and they're playing uh, guitar and bass and drums and instead of doing little polkas and stuff, which are cool, <laughs> but but now, now they're doing something called rock and roll or ah. something other than Elvis and, and, and uh, all the guys from the 50s. Yeah. You know, Jerry Lee Lewis and all of stuff. But, oh, right. So there was a, 
quite a, a British band influence within Chicago at that time. Well, yeah, yeah. for me yeah. too. Uh, you know, but it, to get back into where I came from, it's like to this day I still don't understand how it all happened. But <laughs> my 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 mother got remarried. Oh, right. yeah. And uh, my stepfather was a, a wonderful man, very strict. Yeah. But 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 very disciplined and uh, good work ethic yeah. and ev every uh, summer because he was originally from uh, Memphis Tennessee Covington oh. Tennessee actually yeah we would we would spend the summers down there helping out with the fields and, and stuff and do a little cotton picking and, <laughs> and a little farming and stuff and then we'd get to go to this this guy's house in Memphis and use his pool every now and then <laughs> and every now and then we'd run into to him but his mother would bring out lemonade and stuff and <laughs> I didn't know who he was or anything he was just a cool cool guy you know right. and, uh, with, with a bunch of instruments him and his buddies would sit there and play and let us hang out at the pool because we were hot from working out in the fields yeah and, and it didn't happen all the time but every once in a while but and it turns out it was Elvis Presley oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did wonder. Uh, and, I was going to ask you. Yes, with the Memphis connection, that was that was the one question I was going to ask. Ask so you've answered that already. <laughs> well, yeah, I've still got pictures somewhere. Um, since my mother passed away uh, a few years back, I can't find half of them. But yeah, there was the day he got the Lisa Marie the airplane. He brought it into Midway Airport. And oh yeah. Met him at the plane and got to walk on it and stuff. <laughs> and. Uh, I, honestly, I didn't know who he was no. standing by the by the pool, and um, um, I said, "Well, this is kind of cool that you, <laughs> you play all these instruments and stuff." And I think I was maybe eleven when I saw him on TV. I said, "What what's Elvis doing on TV?" Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, it was quite nice you met him because often people meet people like that the other way around. You know, they see them on TV first, so it's quite nice. You got to meet him the other way around. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, and uh, turns out everybody that worked at the gate and stuff like that were all related to my stepfather, one way or the other. Oh, okay. Their third cousin, fourth right. cousin, and stuff. And in, in Memphis, that's quite uh, quite common. Yes, yes. Uh, all right. Well, and what was he like? You know, sort of off stage. Was he very easy going, or what sort of? Oh, if from what I remember, because uh, I think that was when I was about 11 or 12 was the last time I actually saw him, but, uh, or in person. Yeah. And he was just a perfect gentleman. Yeah, right. I mean, ab absolutely perfect gentleman. Uh, his mother, uh, Gladys, would come out with uh, some lemonade, and he'd make sure everybody got some, and, and uh, some popcorn and stuff like that. Oh, right. wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, took us into the house and showed us around but even though my stepfather would yell no stay out of there you, you get the house dirty and stuff <laughs> <laughs> All right, so are we in, but, the, are we in yeah. the 50s or the 60s then here uh, let's see that had to be the early 60s early 60s yeah, yeah so, so I guess he was I'm trying to think when he was at the height of his fame would it be mid 60s he was or a bit earlier well depending on, he, he kind of had from what what I paid attention to anyway. Yeah. I think he had two different sets of of success. Ah, right, yeah. And and the movies kind of tied the two of them together. Yes. He he first started out with you know, Heartbreak Hotel and, right, yeah. and all that stuff, and mm. then then he got into the Vegas era. Ah, yes. You know, and and uh, at the international, uh, I think it's called the Hilton now. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lake Las Vegas. Okay, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'll have to ask Chris. <laughs> he probably knows more than I do. Oh. <laughs> I, I've never told Chris this story. Oh. I, I, when, when I see him in Vegas, I'll, I'll tell him. Yes. We, we've, got, <laughs> we've got a place in Vegas. All oh, right. Uh, and uh, usually for the winter because okay. Chicago's getting cold. <laughs> Actually, yes, I've, I've heard that the winters can be very cold and lots of snow and so on in <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a, a lot like London. Yes, <laughs> that's it. Yes, but I think even colder winters. I don't know. 
even lower temperatures. I mean, can it? I, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, we went to uh, the Dominion a few years back, and okay. I think that's the. We had to walk a couple of blocks, and it was probably the coldest I think I'd ever been in my life. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think it can it get to like minus twenty sometimes. I think. Oh yeah. Something like yeah, that. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, we've had it minus <laughs> eighty-seven here. Right. Yeah, I think I've seen snow drifts on the TV sometimes from Chicago when when it's. Uh, yeah, and that, and that was in the house. Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I guess everybody always says it's quite a shame how his life went towards the end, really, because he, you know, he could have gone on for many more years performing and singing, really. So. Oh, uh, ab- yeah. absolutely! He was just such a a warm person. That's right. Yes. He, uh, his star uh, would have, from, from what I remember, anyway. Yeah, yeah his, his star would have lent itself to carrying on for a lot of years. I think he could have, you know, maybe a bit like sort of Tom Jones, you know, in that way he's, he's been able to keep going uh, with his music. In fact, uh, yeah, Chris Slade was telling us some very interesting stories about Tom Jones. <laughs> oh yeah, when he I came guess on, yeah. he, I guess he tried to uh, Elvis tried to hire Chris. Oh, did he? Oh, I didn't know about that. He didn't tell us that story. <laughs> yeah, uh, in Vegas. Oh, right, okay. When he, when he, when he was with uh, Tom Jones. Ah, right. Oh, that's... Uh, no, I didn't know that, yeah. yeah. Right. That's, uh, so you, you, you'd met Elvis at that time. Uh, so you were saying you bumped into other members of Chicago as time went on. So how did, you, how did your paths cross with the other members of the band? But they... they they're nice chaps. I mean, they're, they're, yeah. they're nice to talk to and uh, they're very polite. And they weren't egomaniacs or no. anything that I remember. <laughs> uh, so did you used to... Which go, is usually the case. Before they got sort of really big, did you used to kind of go to their shows in Chicago and so on and watch them perform? Uh, I, had, I had seen them a couple times, once in Milwaukee and once in Chicago. Oh, uh, right, yes. And at the same time, I was trying to put a band together as a young young man, and, oh. uh, and and still busy with school. Yes. And uh, they were they were going to DePaul University and studying music and oh, business. Yes. And, uh, odd, oddly enough, I, I took some uh, music classes there as well after oh. they were gone. Yeah. And it was it was nice. Uh, actually, it's a great school. It still is. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Berkeley, I did uh, uh, a correspondence course because I couldn't go all the way out to Boston. <laughs> oh, right, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, so you studied but, it? Uh, you did study it, it uh, Berkeley. Uh, yeah, I took a, a, a mail order type of thing oh, uh, right. in, in music theory. And, yeah. And then I, I supplemented that with a local college. and uh, oh, okay. So it, it was uh, quite a good way to learn for, for me because yeah. I could... I could go out and play and work at the same time while I'm studying and stuff. So. Yes, no, sounds a good a good balance. So, by the sounds of it, Chicago was a very vibrant city at that time with all sorts of new bands and new music. Oh, coming out. constantly, <laughs> constantly. And we had a town like called Old Town, much like Camden Town. Oh yes. Uh, and it's it's gotten really commercial yeah. now, and it, and it's okay. Uh, but I think that's what I like about Camden Town. Yeah, uh, it's it's just it's still the same vibe <laughs> that Chicago used to have. Ah, okay, yes, yes. And uh, as long as, in fact, our we were there, uh, or our our daughter and her family was there the week before we got there. Okay, yeah. we went. We met in uh, Salzburg, and we went to a a wedding. All right, that, and. And we to- we told her since you're stopping there, yeah. you got to go to Camden Town. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, and she said, and she's kind of she's not a prude or anything. Right. She just works hard. Yeah. And she said, okay, I got the kids with me. We'll see what it's like. All right. And she just she's still raving about oh. how awesome it was. <laughs> that's interesting. Said, that, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, you said it's, it's like Chicago. We're, we're interested uh, that, or, or like the old Chicago. <laughs> I, it is like old Chicago for yeah. sure, and and I, I give uh, everyone there a lot of credit. And there's a good vibe walking around. Yeah. You, I mean, to go to the gig that night, I got off the tube, I walked across the street, and there. Yes. 
<laughs> oh yes, everything was very close by. Yes, yeah, enough area. Now, Chicago used to be that way. Oh. Not so much anymore. Yeah. So was they, it? They uh, mm. don't have the infrastructure correct. Oh right. So, yeah, become very commercial. I mean, was the was the old town Chicago? Was that where a lot of bands used to play then? Oh yeah, yeah they, they had uh, uh, a place called Mother's the Jazz Showcase, uh, uh, Crystal Pistol uh, oh, right. for. That, that crystal pistol was more of a topless place, but oh. that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Earl of Old Town for the, the, the folk scene, uh, oh, right. like John Prine and, and uh, Steve Goodman and, and uh, Mike Post and all those guys. Oh, right. What um, other musicians did you see in and around Chicago then that we might know uh, <laughs> around that time? Quite a few. Uh, Buddy Guy, obviously. Yeah. Uh, because he's got Buddy Guy's legends. Uh, actually, a friend of mine, Kevin Johnston, was his drummer for 12 years. Oh, right. Um, uh, Eddie Vedder, obviously. Ah, yeah. Uh, yes. And, uh, gee, I can't, Billy Corgan. Okay. He, yeah. And uh, there's literally, there's hundreds of them, but <laughs> a lot of them come in and out. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, in fact, we were at a place called Double Door, and the Rolling Stones played. Nobody knew they were showing up. It was just a little, it was a, a pub much like uh, the Underworld. Okay. All right, that must have been a good gig to go to. <laughs> well, yeah, but nobody knew. Oh, all right. The only reason, the only reason I knew is because... The chiropractor that was traveling with uh, Dylan and uh, yeah. and the Stones and stuff uh, called a friend of mine, his, his nephew, and uh, said, come on, we're going to a show. I said, okay. <laughs> and wouldn't tell me until we got there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, that, uh... that and uh, the Stones and uh, Dylan as well. Oh, my gosh. At the same venue. Uh, yeah, not the same night, but the same venue. All right, that's it. <laughs> yeah, they, they get into the area. Uh, they're, uh -huh. uh, yeah, I never, like I said, uh, got real close to any of them, but, but Terry. Yes. Uh, but that's because of the, the lessons with Stu. Uh, yes. But every uh -huh. time I met the other guys, uh, and I have met them all, all once, maybe twice, yeah. different gigs or something. Oh, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful people. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. Amazingly, amazingly talented. Yes. No, no, uh... you know, I, but they're coming from Chicago, so I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> boasting about Chicago. Yes. <laughs> all right, great. Well, we've got a couple more bits to do just before we go. We have a feature at the end of interviews uh, that we do called Favourite Ten, and it involves... Uh, we prompt the questions, but it involves going through ten favourite things in uh, one minute. Okay. Uh, so are you ready? You ready to go? Uh, uh... I, I, I'm ready as I'll ever be. I All right. Guess, uh, <laughs> Great. Okay. Uh, here we go. Uh, first one is favourite book. Favourite book. The yeah. Bible. Okay. Uh, favourite film. Tombstone. Okay. Uh, favourite place go on holiday or vacation? London. Okay, <laughs> that's a good answer, yeah. Okay, next one. Uh, favourite type of cuisine? Uh, Italian. Okay. Uh, if you have to travel by boat or plane, which do you prefer? Uh, plane. Okay. Uh, favourite type of tree? Uh, white oak. Okay. Uh, favourite fruit? Um, watermelon. Okay. Uh, favourite terrain, countryside or town? Uh, countryside. Okay. Uh, if you have to go hiking or cycling, which would you choose? Hiking. Okay. And you're in a restaurant, you have to choose between starter or dessert, which one would you choose? Uh, starter. Okay. <laughs> That's great. I think we've we'll done those in just under a minute, so a pretty good time. <laughs> <laughs> good deal. Great. Well done, Clyde. Some good, some good answers there. Hi, this is Clyde Richardson from Chicago, Illinois, on Camden Town Radio with Howard, the man himself. And you need to listen up and you need to pay attention to this station because it's awesome. And keep rocking.